Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about uh, running out of money. A lot of business owners, you know, they get started and they might be, you know, three months, six months, one year, two years, three years into their business model and find themselves running out of cash. And so recently I've found a lot of uh, colleagues that are starting business for the first time and or even some investments that I made. Uh, the CEOs of the founders are running into cash flow crunches and for a lot of them that may have come from the corporate world, uh, it's a new experience for them and they're, you know, for lack of a better term, they're, they're freaking out over it. And what's interesting to me anyway, is as they start to freak out, they start to make decisions that are furthering uh, their financial distress. And I think it's because they don't know what to do, so they just start to kind of flounder in the water and um, that's where you get into big trouble. So I thought I would share with you some ideas on what to do if you find yourself in this situation or you know, somebody that you're doing business with. And I share this advice as somebody who got into trouble about, Jeez, it was a long time ago. I'm going to say like 17 years ago, I took on a couple of partners in a different business model and uh, got myself into big trouble because I had bet uh, on partners' potential rather than their abilities and ended up finding myself uh, in major financial distress to the point where I was... Uh, you know, doing 250 and $500 speaking engagements for local chambers of commerce in Vancouver just to pay my minimum balances on my credit cards to try to keep uh, my head above water. I know this situation intimately having been there before. And, you know, in a, in a future video, I'll talk about steps you can put in place to make sure that doesn't happen. But in this video, let's talk about what to do if you're in it. The first thing for you to think about is how you're showing up. When people find themselves in financial distress, especially around their business, they end up acting fearful, right? So they get really timid and they're scared to talk to people or to face their creditors or that type of thing. And that avoidance actually makes things worse and worse. Sometimes they're angry, right? So they're, they're angry about the situation and that anger ends up spilling out into the clients or into their markets. Again, sends the wrong message. Sometimes it shows up as frustration where nothing seems to be right. And you know, what, what do they say? When you feel like a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And so that fear, the timidness, the anger, the frustration, all of these emotions will get in the way of you recovering uh, from the situation that you're in. So it's time to really kind of uh, dig deep and get into what, what I call that gladiator mindset, yes, right? Yes. It's, it's do or die and not today, right? You are not gonna die today. So not looking about what you failed to do or mistakes you made in the past or how people let you down or you know, clients that didn't sign, what can you do to make things happen? So the first step I suggest that people do is they look at their burn rate. Now your burn rate is basically how your company or business model is using money, right? To, to sustain and to grow. Cost for employment, so if you have employees or contractors, your cell phone bills, your rent if you have commercial space, any leases that you have, basically any money that your company burns through in a given month to be in business every month. And so I want you to make a list of all of the things that you have to pay out in order to stay in business. The next thing is to look at cash flow. And a lot of times people think burn rate and cash flow is the same thing, but cash flow is best thought of as the tides of the ocean, right? Thing water comes in, water goes out. And so your cash flow considers the, the, the money going out, your burn rate, and the money coming in, right? So your cash flow coming in. And you wanna look at that. Most people in financial distress have more money going out than it's coming in, and that more money going out is probably being serviced by debt, and that's where they start to freak out is they start to realize I'm running out of air, right? I don't have enough money to coming in, and I'm now running out of my credit lines. The third step is basically to look at all of the expenses that you're currently incurring that are number one, not operational in nature. And what I mean by that is, you know, they're discretionary. Uh, it might be lunches out, it might be a bigger cell phone bill than you need to have. 
I like to cut everything that isn't directly related to generating revenue. And if I can't draw a line between that expense and how it helps me bring in money, you cut it or minimize it. I remember whack when I was in trouble and I think I was paying $100 a month for cell phone bill back then. Of course, things are even more affordable now, but back then it was expensive and dropping down to a $40 plan and really being mindful on how I was using my cell phone minutes to give you a little insight into how old I am. I actually had to track my minutes. And so any time I could, I would use a landline wherever I was to make my calls and then use my cell phone to respond to calls or to take incoming calls. Looking at things like that to minimize your burn rate will give you a longer field of which to, to kind of turn the boat and, and correct where you're at. And a fourth step is once you know what your burn rate is and what your cash flow position looks like, start having conversations with people that you owe money to, right? So the people that have extended you credit or that you have terms with, you need to have a conversation with them. So during the COVID situation earlier this year, we've seen a lot of people having conversations with their commercial landlords. Um, it could be with your accountant or your lawyer or you know, other professional services that you're using, ask for terms, right? Is there something that you can do? Can you extend out your payments? Um, if you're working with a professional, let's say an advisor or a business coach, what you could say is get creative with them and say, you know, if I were to refer business to you or bring you opportunities, is there a way for you to give me a break on my fees? It's time to get really creative. And a lot of people, if they're on your side, they're going to appreciate that you're in a bit of a rut and most of us that have you know been successful have been in that rut ourselves so we appreciate how challenging it is and they're going to be open to having those conversations especially if they want to kind of bridge you uh, into the next level of where you're at what we call bridge financing right helping you get from where you are to where you want to go so don't hide from the people that you owe money to have conversations with them and you'll find that a lot of times you're not the only client they've had that have run into these problems and they might have solutions that uh, they can bring to the table that would be helpful for you just to recap know what your burn rate is know what your cash flow looks like stop making expenses that don't relate to revenue and or minimize them where you can and then have conversations with the people that you owe mon money to and it can be long-term or short-term debt and look to see what they can do in the long term or the short term to give you a little bit of relief your mindset plays a big role in your ability to recover and it's just like drowning right you have to stop freaking out decide what needs to be done and then work your ass off. And that's really the last point is anytime I found myself in a financial situation where I was in trouble or clients that are in it now, the one thing that you do have control over is you can hustle harder. Don't buy into the pity party. Don't lay in bed with the covers over your head. Don't sit, you know, watching Netflix and avoiding the problem. Put your head down, go into it hard. And if you do fail, and some businesses do, in fact, a majority of business models fail, uh, that's not really motivational, but it's true. And often it comes to planning and burn rate, but don't leave kind of anything on the table, right? Everything that you can do to make it happen has to go out. If you're in trouble and you're working 10 hours a day, make it 18 hours a day. Leave it all on the field so that you know at the end of the day, you did everything that you could have to make it happen. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Thanks for checking in. If you have any questions around financing, you can put them in the comments below. I know sometimes people are a bit sensitive to sharing that information. So you can email me at chris at goceo.com and I'll do my best to answer it. But we've all been there. And so there's nothing to be uh, embarrassed by. But if you don't face it head on and do something about it that should be embarrassing to you and you're going to wear that uh you're going to wear that hat forever so do what it takes to get it out anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video Stop. wait a minute oh gladiators eat first even if it is ramen noodles because things are tough see you soon